Hi everyone, it's Susan Ilford. Are you a business owner or um, just a person who's busy in life who hasn't figured out their 2019 yet? You're not alone. Here it is the end of January and I can't tell you how many people I talk to say, can't we do a restart? Where did January even go? And I, if you're anything at all like me, I find December gets super busy and we have all the best intentions about planning our year ahead. And then before we know it, we're already well into the next year and we're thinking, okay, well, might as well give up. I don't have time to plan what I want to have done. Let's just see what happens. Well, how has seeing what happens worked for you in the past? Someone really famous, I looked him up, Albert Einstein has said that if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, you are going to get the same result. So what would it be like if we made 2019 different this year for yourself, for your business, for your career, for your life? What would that be like? A few years ago, when I became a coach, I got a lot better at planning my year to, to come in ahead. And so I developed a process from working with other coaches and just through all my reading and through the different work that I've done that I've now been using year after year to really visualize what I want to have happen for the year ahead and what I really don't want to have happen. And I'm not going to say this is foolproof, but it does work so much better now that I take that step back and really think about what I want to have happen. So the reason I'm coming to you in this video today, I have a number of videos planned for now and in the coming, um, the next couple of weeks, where I'm gonna walk you through the beginning of my planning process to help you get really clear about what it is you want to have happen in 2019 and what you really don't want to have happen in 2019. And this process that I use is very similar for my business and for my life. So this works whether you are a business owner or not. So I believe really strongly in planning as anybody of you, of you who knows me, like my background in communications is as a strategic communications planner. And I've brought that planning and strategy experience now to the business and leadership coaching that I do in addition to the PR planning. And what does it really take to lay your stake in the ground to claim what you want to have happen in the coming year? It's not just a plan. I have, been in planning for too long than I care to mention, over 25 years, and I, you can write a plan, I can sell it to a client, I can have my employer hire me to do it, and it's gonna sit on a shelf unless it feels real. And so what's been missing from a lot of these plans over the years is, is buy-in. Buy-in from the client, buy-in from my boss, buy-in from the employer, buy-in from you. Like, what does it take to create a plan that you actually believe in? So you might think that because I'm a planner, this becomes easily to me. And what I have to say is that it's actually a process that I purposefully bring myself through every year. For the last five years or so, I now take time in December. And yes, I did that this year too, because I know that January gets busy. And I reflect on the year that just was. And I think purposefully about the what the year is to come with a vision to how I want to, how we might want to see, and I say we, in terms of my business, my family, other people who are in my world, because it's not just me alone who is making my world happen the way I'd like to happen. So it comes with focused attention, and um, sometimes, you know, business and life can all get mixed up together. So whether you're a business owner or you are living your busy life, this is for you. So today, in today's lesson, we're gonna focus on the year that just was. We're gonna focus on 2018. So I've got three questions for you today. The first one, and jot it down, because you won't have time to do it just in this video. So jot it down and say, what brought you the most joy or fulfillment in 2018? What really worked? Take a few moments to think about the high points. And you know, this could be as simple as, you know, I'm thinking back to a, a warm summer evening where I went for ice cream with my family. And I'm thinking like, why is that a high point? Like we should be able to go for ice cream anytime and warm summer evenings, 
you know, there's a few months of them. So this should not be a unique experience, but yet somehow there was something special about that evening. So something as simple as that can be your high point for 2018. Or maybe you got a new job that you really loved, or maybe you got married and that was a high point, or maybe you went on a dream trip and that was a high point, or maybe it was something simple like going for ice cream with your family. You can, all of it counts. So just write down the points that come to mind first. There's probably three, come up with three to five high points in terms of what really brought you the most joy or fulfillment in 2018. Now, question number two, this one's harder. What brought you the most disappointment or challenge in 2018? Now, it's harder because it's hard to think about those things, I know. Um, it actually might be easier to think of the hard parts because we all have a tendency to think about, we usually have a tendency to think about the things that were hard versus the things that were simple and joyful, like going for ice cream. So I want you to write down what really sucked about 2018. Like, just be honest. Like, so many of my clients this year are just going, you know what? It just sucked. Parents are sick. Um, maybe you lost your job. Maybe someone close to you died. Like, I know, I don't like to be the heavy, but sometimes, you know, life can suck sometimes. Maybe you, you made a decision. Let's be honest. Maybe you made a decision that you wish you hadn't, um, that you'd really rather forget about and that really dragged you down. But be honest, because if we can't confront reality, we're not going to be able to create a new reality. So we have to be, we have to accept or at least recognize the good and the bad in order to be able to move forward. Now, question number three. I want you to take a look back and notice what were some of those life lessons that just kept coming at you? What patterns were repeating? So the question you should write down in your notebook if you're taking notes is what areas of your life were calling for your attention? What did the universe decide that you needed to learn over and over and over again because you just weren't getting it? Um, this one can take a little bit more time to figure out and it can be hard because it could be more emotional than some of the other Things as we realize, oh yeah, I did have to learn that over and over. So, and sometimes, you know, they could be things that we think we should be able to fix all on our own, but something keeps holding us back from doing that. Um, we just don't want to. So what keeps, ha what keeps happening over and over and over to you or by you that the universe is conspiring to ensure that you learn? Reflect on that and write it down. Okay, so this is just the beginning. And believe me, if you thought planning was hard, that's almost the hardest part. Like it's, there's more energy around planning positive things to the future because we don't plan for negative things to happen. So the harder part is acknowledging the difficult things. So bear with me. And if you want to be taken out of the darkness and into the light, write these things down. Take some time to do that. And then watch for another video that I'm going to do in a few days and we can go on to the next step, which will be a little bit brighter. So I am going to try to post two videos a week until we get to my vision boarding workshop that I'm going to put a shameless plug in for right now. Um, I did my first one last year and we had so much fun. It's, I created a vision boarding workshop that's in two parts. So you actually don't have to be in Calgary to take this workshop. The first part is virtual, and that's where I walk you through my planning process and we work for about 90 minutes together over a Zoom video conferencing call. You do not have to have your video on. And I have a presentation that I walk you through. And you get really clear about what you'd want to put on your vision board and what you really don't want to have on it. So I find the hardest part when you go into these creative nights and you have a, a project that you're supposed to do, I don't, I almost never know what I want to start with. And so this takes that to me, the hard part out of it by doing the planning first. So we do the planning. It's on a Tuesday evening. It's February the 5th, seven o'clock mountain time. And we spend an hour and a half together over a Zoom call. And then on that Friday evening, if you're in Calgary, you can come do it live with me or you can do it on your own. But the second part happens live in a small DIY workshop in Southeast Calgary called Pinnovate. It is super cute. I absolutely love it. And they have all the supplies ready for you and they'll be all ready for us. 
and they also have beverages and food that you can purchase and they're giving us free gelato who doesn't love free gelato so it's a vision boarding workshop in two parts first part is february 5th second part is february the 8th and if you're not in Cal in calgary and you'd still like to join in the fun i've got special pricing if you just want to do the first part so i am going to ha if you want to hear more um send me a note on facebook or Instagram or an email. I'm at Susan at Susan Elford.com. That's Elford with an E like an elf. And I would love to um, love to be a part of making your 2019 really spectacular. See you next time.